substance abuse isn't just a thing that humans deal with. Even animals enjoy a hit or two off the old toad every now and then. This video is going to take a look at several species that have their own unique ways of getting lit. Bitty than a hole, bitty than a hole, bitty than a hole, bitty than a hole, bitty. Jumping right off the deep end, we have dolphins. A breed of dolphins called the Rough Tooth are a group of thrill seekers to say the least. In 2013, filmmaker John Downer did a series on dolphins. While researching, he discovered that dolphins really seemed to enjoy playing with puffer fish. The dolphins took turns chewing on them and actually passing it around like a volleyball. The puffer fish is typically known as a very toxic species of fish. It carries a toxin that is powerful enough to kill hundreds of dolphins if ingested. The dolphins being the absolute brain wolves that they are figured out they could simply chew on the puffer fish just a little and start getting faded. This takes the meaning of Puff Puff Pass to a whole different level. After getting high, the dolphins were found just hanging out, touching their noses on the water surface, taking in every part of life that they could. You can't really blame them. Researchers still aren't sure if they're really just playing with the puffer fish, passing it around like a ball, getting physical and mental stimulation, or if they're just getting stimulated mentally. They're one of the smartest mammals for a reason. We're going to dive into the bug's den next. Getting a DUI is one of the worst crimes you could possibly commit. But if you think it only applies to humans, then think again. An insect that falls all too easily into the arms of alcoholism is the bee. Alcohol comes from a lot of different sources. Rye, barley, and agave being some of the more popular. But tons of fruits and veggies can turn into alcohol through a process known as fermentation. In the hot summer months when these little guys are hard at work trying to obtain all the nectar they possibly can, there's a good chance they come across some fermented flowers. When fermentation happens, it creates ethanol. And we're not talking about no 40 proof. We're talking about the good shit. The get this man operating some heavy machinery shit. From what I know about the bee, their liver is probably the size of a sesame seed. So when they get to sipping on the sauce, they start feeling good. And it's fast. A drunk bee is very comparable to a drunk human. They bump into walls, they fall on the floor. They're incapable of flying. If the bee does make it home without getting pulled over, they aren't greeted with a very warm welcome. When the bee shows back up to the hive, they get stopped by the bouncer at the door. What happens next is some medieval type punishment shit. Without any hesitation, the guard bee rips off the drunken fool's legs, cutting the chances of survival down to almost zero. This act of justice sends a message to the other bees in the hive that we're having thoughts about indulging. Siberia is known for its harsh winters. It's also less commonly known for being where reindeer inhabit. Back in 1967, a man named R. Gordon Wasson published a book all about magic mushrooms in the Far East. This led to other scholars sticking their noses in the mix. They noted that in Siberia, both the shamans and reindeer were known to eat these mushrooms together. Okay, so hold up. You're trying to tell me that Santa and his reindeer were quite literally tripping balls every Christmas? Uh, who the fuck was looking after the elves? What was going on over there? The specific mushroom the reindeer eats is the fly agaric mushroom, which, unlike humans, can eat without harm. So humans, being the intelligent creatures they are, collect the urine from reindeers after they've digested these mushrooms so that they can safely hallucinate. Speaking of magic mushrooms, have you ever heard of the stoned ape theory? Look that shit up, Jamie. Pull that shit up, Jamie. Millions of years ago, before the evolution of humans, our ape ancestors roamed the earth, foraging for food for their children. Among the food they found was none other than psilocybin mushrooms. And what better way to spend a day on prehistoric earth than imagining mystic geometry that you can't even begin to understand yet. So in short, ape eat magic mushroom. Ape unlock brain too. Ape develop human consciousness. Ape together strong. Okay, we'll get back on topic now. I'm sure some of you have gone days, maybe even weeks on benders where you've been sky high the entire time, unsure of what reality you're even in, but I just want you to know that you've got fucking nothing on birds. As you know from earlier, alcohol forms in berries as they ferment. This typically takes place after the first few frosts of the year. During this time, it is much more common to see birds randomly turning into kamikazes and targeting the nearest windows they can find. And that's because of none other than good old-fashioned alcohol. Now, I'm not even really sure how birds can drink alcohol, considering on the inside they're mostly electronics and just hollow bones. All of my ultra-intelligent far-right MAGA supporters know that the current-day birds aren't even real. All the real birds died in 1986 due to Reagan killing them and replacing them with spies. The birds work for the bourgeoisie. But obviously there is some perks to having hollow bones. Not only does this make the birds lighter, it also allows them to store up on much more alcohol than normal solid bone creatures. Most birds know when to call it quits. They just have a few berries, get a little tipsy, then go finish the day off by hanging out on a power line. But let me tell you about cedar waxwings. 
This is a bird that's commonly found in North America and is known for quite literally eating themselves to death. The waxwing's favorite berry is known as the rowan berry. They're known for eating so many of these berries that they end up killing themselves from acute liver failure. Mama didn't raise no quitter. For this next animal, we're going to take a trip down under. In Australia, there's been dozens of crop circle sightings, deemed to be aliens or some other form of galactic life force, coming down, destroying poppy fields with their immensely hot spacecrafts, or maybe stealing the Earthlings' goods to bring back to their own planets. But, I, you know, I doubt that. This phenomenon, like many others, is easily explained by blaming Australian wildlife. The wallaby is like a kangaroo, but rather vertically challenged. This prevents them from getting at all the good drugs that grow on trees. We're just going to ignore the fact that they can jump six feet in the air for this. The wallaby's drug of choice is opiates. After wallabies get hopped up on opiates, they start hopping around, causing the crop circle outbreaks that people in a number of countries believe are created by aliens. It started off as peer pressure. A one-time thing, you know? Slowly I realized how good poppies actually are. It quickly grew into a frequent weekend outing. Poppies made me into who I wish I was. Poppies made me realize life is okay when I'm not a kangaroo. The tolerance to poppies builds up fast. It used to take one poppy to get high. Now it takes a hundred. I need poppies to feel normal. That, that kangaroo that let me try a few hits wasn't even a dealer. I had to find a new dealer. Now he's a felon and he carries a gun. This isn't working. I, I need to quit. 